brothers and sisters, welcome back to the Behaviour Revolution. Hope you enjoyed the video we did yesterday on Delivered, I Am Your Deliverance, what it truly means to be delivered. How desperate are you to be delivered? What does deliverance really mean to you? Do you think you need to be delivered from something? Even if you know the name of Yahusha, do you know how powerful he truly is? Do you know what authority he carries as Elohim seated on the throne? What behavior should we, what approach should we have towards him? Should it be one of, you know, just expecting? Should it be one of, you know, entitlement? Because I've done this and I've done that and I've been with you for so long and I've been sick. All these things. Let's have a look at the word beg today. We don't like that word, do we? But let's look at it anyway. Beg. And the uh, Aliyah website's down again. So the Strongs is hard to get there. So we're going to do something different today in this eSword program. So let's go in here and let's just type beg in there. We see it comes up in the King James Version. It only comes up three times. And one of them is useless because it's Greek. So we're not going to look at that one. But this will give us an idea of what the word is. The number in the Hebrews. H7592, which I've already typed in here. H7592. So we get here in the Strong's, we've got a primitive root to inquire. What does beg mean? It means to inquire by implication, to request, by extension, to demand, demand something, ask or get counsel, ask counsel, ask on, beg, borrow, lay to charge, consult, demand, desire, earnestly, inquire, greet, obtain, leave, lend, pray, request, require, salute, straightly, surely, wish. And they have another version here in the Strongs. It's, uh, well, they have the ancient Hebrew one, but it's a bit, it's a bit cosmic, this one. Quiet, sense of quietness, something being drawn out. This one's always a bit cosmic, the explanations, because it's using the pictographic Hebrew, which is just a ripoff of paleo anyway. So let's stick with the Strongs. Well, we've got the um, brown driver one here. To ask, inquire, borrow, beg, to ask for, to ask as a favour. You want favour? To borrow anything we ask of Yahushua is, is on lend because he owns everything. So anything he gives us, we're borrowing because it all belongs to him. To inquire of, to inquire of, consult, a deity, oracle, to seek, seek, to ask for oneself, ask, leave of absence to inquire carefully, to beg, practice beggary, to be given on request, to grant, make over, let, ask successfully or give or lend on request, grant or make over to. So let's go back to the Strongs for a minute. And it says down here, that there's 172 occurrences of it. So if we click on that, it shows you all the different occurrences where the word ask or beg, it's the same word for ask as it is for beg, as it is for require, where it is. And you can see, I'm not going to go through all 172 of them, but you can see there's all these scriptures here that speaks about asking, asking, straight, asked us straightly, asked. By the time we get to Exodus, it's more borrow, borrow, borrowed. They lent it, they borrowed it, they asked. All these occurrences. What I think would be easier, rather than the King James, is if we go up here to the Bible and change it to the Scriptures. I can't get any other more Hebrew, uh, Yahuwah, Yahusha type Scriptures in this program at this stage. So uh, the Scriptures IRS is pretty cool. So if we go up to this one and then type search, and let's type in the word beg. Let's see what comes up. 17 verses found. This is what you are to say to Joseph. I beg you, please forgive the transgression of your brothers and their sins. I beg you, go out and fight them now. No, brothers, I beg you. Job says, I have called my servant, but he gives no answer. I have to beg 
him with my mouth. Psalm 80, return, we beg you. Psalm 109, let his children always wander and beg. We beg you. I beg you, teacher, I beg you, look at my son for he is only, he's my only son. So these, here we're getting into the Yahushua's on the scene now. People are begging you, Yahushua, for healing. I beg you, Father, that you would send him to my father's house. Now we're in Acts. Paul replied, I am a Jew from Tarsus in Calicia, a citizen of no mean city. And I beg you, allow me to speak to the people. But in order not to hinder you any further, I beg you to hear us briefly in your gentleness. We beg on behalf of Messiah, be restored to favour with Elohim. Brothers, I beg you to become as I am, because I am as you are. You did not wrong me at all. For the rest then, brothers, we beg you and call upon you in the Master, Yahushua, that as you have received from us, how you should walk and to please Elohim, you should excel still more. But brothers, we beg you to know those who labor among you and are over you in the master and admonish you. So beg, to beg. Let's type in ask because ask, I mean, scripture says you don't receive because you don't ask. You know, you just assume you've got it. And it's not always our fault. We've been told. All you have to do is believe in Yahushua and repent and go into the water and you've got everything you need. Yeah. Ripper, mate. Not true. Water, not necessary. Yahushua, who's that if it's not Elohim? There's a door that's open to us if we accept him, if we accept his way. And you've got to want him. You've got to be cut to the heart. You've got to take a good hard look at yourself and go, I hate everything that this is. I hate this spirit that's in me, this, you know, disgusting filth that controls me all the time. I hate it. You've got to want the way out. So we've typed in ask here. And uh, let's go, let's skip the older stuff for, and get to where Yahushua steps in. So that's a little bit more useful to us. Therefore, do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. Yahushua knows what we need, doesn't he? Sometimes he's waiting for us to ask, to want him. Ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be open to you. Knock, what? The door. The door will be open to you. The way out of everything you've wanted to shed, everything you've been through, there's a way out of it, as we discussed yesterday in deliverance. But you've got to ask. You've got to cry out. You've got to demand. You've got to beg him. Beg him. That's what he wants. For us to face who he is. Get down on your knees at his feet. Isn't that what the genuine people in the scriptures did to him? What about the woman who fell on her feet and washed his feet with her tears and dried his feet with her hair, anointed his head with expensive nard, perfume, from the alabaster box. If you then being wicked, now this was a good scripture here, I'm going to get the context here, Matthew 7, click on that, Matthew 7, everyone who asks, ask and it shall be given to you, seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be opened to you, for everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it shall be open. Or is there a man among you, if his son asks for bread, shall give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, shall he give him a snake? If you then, being wicked, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your Father, who is in the heavens, give what is good to those who ask him? Now, you may have received his spirit and you may have had a, a decent amount of change happen to you. But if you don't feel like you're on fire, if you don't feel like you've had that snap, and you know when you've had it, you know when you've had it, Satan has no more effect over you. The world can just get stuffed. You don't care. If you haven't felt like you've got that snap, what have you got to do? Just assume, just get angry, because see how it says, is there a man among you who, if his son asks for bread, shall you give him a stone? Well, my sons, after waiting for, you know, 15 odd, 16, 17, 18 years, most of my sons don't even want to ask. They don't even want to talk to me. You wait this long to have a decent conversation with them as men, and they don't want to talk to you. They don't want to know you half the time. So what I've had to look at in that is, 
what my sons are doing to me, I'm doing to Yahushua. Obviously, they don't want to talk to me because they're angry about things and, you know, uh, life and things that have gone down and everything. They're angry. Well, I'm, I've been angry. I have to look at what's been done to me for my sons is how I'm treating Yahushua. And so I haven't asked for more from Yahushua. I've just been working for Yahushua and, and quite happily to work for him. But when there's this offer of a snap, a, a, a baptism of spirit and fi a fire to come, I'm just like, how dare you not give it to me? How dare you? Look what I've done. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Look how long I've been in there. Look, friends and family and wives and children, everybody hate me because of you. And you won't give me this. See the attitude we can have and I have had to actually think that you might actually have to ask for something. Is that beneath us? Is that beneath you to ask, let alone to beg, beg, you know, or demand? Moses had that open relationship with Yahushua. We read the stories of Moses and go, how could you talk to Yahushua like that? He just demanded things. He got furious at Yahushua. He was, but it was honest. Are we that honest? So look how our, look how my sons feel about me. Well, look how I've been feeling about Yahushua. Angry. And yet if we ask, I mean, this is just natural fathers and sons. If you then being wicked know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your father who is in the heavens give what is good to those who ask him? I've never even asked. I've just been waiting. I'll wait on you. Uh, it's, you know everything anyway. You know what I need anyway. You know this and you know that. And you know, you, you clearly know what you're doing because everything that I wanted to happen in the past didn't happen. So, you know, if wives and children and families and businesses and everything, not taking account of myself, of course, because who, you know, we're not going to look at myself. No, it's all Yahushua's fault. See how, how screwed up our mind is and we listen to demons and we believe them. And it's disgusting. Yahushua says very simply, if you ask, you receive. If you seek, you will find. I mean, he's not a total bastard. He's not like that. He's not one at all. He's soft and gentle and kind. And But he demands justice. He demands righteousness. He demands cleanliness. He can't come close. So let's go back to the search. Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning any matter that they ask, it shall be done for them by my Father in the heavens. But Yahushua answering said, you do not know what you ask. This is when they asked to sit on his right hand and his left hand. He said, Yahushua said, you don't know what you ask. Are you able to drink the cup that I'm about to drink and to be immersed with the immersion that I'm immersed with? They said to him, we are able that immersion, of course, was suffering and death. And the answer to us is, yes, we are able to. He's uh, commissioned us, demanded of that of us to pick up our stakes and follow him. Whatever you ask in prayer, believing. There's the key again, believing. Do you believe that if you ask something genuine and pure and what he wants for you, do you believe if you ask that you would receive it? Oh, I haven't believed that. I thought, oh, I have to f I've seen other people who were, oh, I can't be like that. I can't. No, I can't. I can't. It wouldn't work for me. Doesn't. Where's that? Was, is that belief or is that unbelief? I've seen your power in other people and, and I've seen, oh, it just wouldn't work for me. It just wouldn't work. Would, unbelief. Unbelief. He says, whatever you ask in prayer, believing, you shall receive. In John 14, and whatever you ask in my name. What's his name? Sounds like the name is pretty powerful there. Whatever you ask in my name, Yahushua, that I shall do in order that the Father might be esteemed in the Son. If you ask whatever in my name, I shall do it. And I shall ask the Father and he shall give you another helper to stay with you forever. That's the spirit that's in us now. It's not a separate entity or a separate being. It's Yahushua. It's all Yahushua. If you stay in me and my words stay in you. There's a couple of ifs here. If you stay in me, if my words stay in you, you shall ask whatever you wish and it shall be done for you. So there's some ifs there. If you stay in me, if you're relating to me, if you're obedient 
to my voice what I tell you to do. If you're obedient, you shall ask whatever you wish and it shall be done for you. You didn't choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain, not faint, not fall over, remain. So whatever you ask the Father in my name, he might give you. Does that mean we pray now, dear Father, Yahuwah, in the name of Yahushua, what are we, Christians? We don't come to the Father in the name of the Son. The Son is Allahim. Yahushua became Allahim. John 16, until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you shall receive in order that your joy might be complete. Ask and you shall receive. Do you believe what the scripture says? Ask and you will receive. James 1, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of Elohim. The greatest wisdom I would consider is that Yahushua is Elohim. It unlocks all the scriptures. It makes his spirit comes out of the word to you and tells you secret truths. It makes it clear. The ink on the page just clicks together and makes sense to you. That's wisdom. But if you are struggling and you can't find it and you can't understand how Yahushua became Elohim, ask if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask Valium, who gives to all generously and without reproach, and it shall be given to him. But he should ask in belief, not doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. There's that belief again. You've got to ask that if you are genuine, and your repentance is genuine, and you've stopped your sins, and you are consciously proving yourself to Yahushua, Whatever you ask in belief, he will give you. You desire and do not have. You murder and are jealous and are unable to obtain. You strive and fight and you do not possess because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask evilly in order to spend it on your own pleasures things of the flesh. He's not talking about asking for things of the flesh. Although he is in every thought, he is in every hair of our head, he knows everything about us. We can ask him anything in our life, whether even if it is financial for him to help you. But you don't ask for things to fall out of the sky. You ask for opportunities. You ask, you ask him to open doors. That's not selfish. You're relating to him all day about everything. Whatever we ask, we receive from him because we guard his commands and do what is pleasing in his sight. Guard his commands. What, what is Yahushua's commands? Yahushua summarized all the commands and precepts and Torahs and prophets. He, he summarized it all into love, Yahuwah, love Elohim and love your neighbor as yourself. If you're guarding those commands, producing the fruits of righteousness from your behavior, the fruits of the spirit, Whatever you ask, we receive because we guard his commands and do what is pleasing in his sight. And this is the boldness that we have in him, that if we ask whatever according to his desire, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. So that's that there. I think that's enough scriptures for ask and for beg. What are we going to do with that, guys? I mean, do you think you've already got it? Do you think you've already made it? Do you think you're just ready to go and whoop de doo When's Yahushua going to come back? No. Have you even been baptized in spirit and fire? Have you come to the end of your desires, the end of your agendas, the end of your sins? Can you consciously say, I don't sin anymore? And I'm not talking about, you know, accidental, you know, you know, things that we stumble over. Everybody's not perfect. But I'm talking about on purpose, intentional crimes, sins. Have you cancelled them? Have you, have you conquered them? Have you overcome? That's what you've got to do. You can't do it by yourself. You can't conquer anything by yourself. We try and we fall over. You have to cry out to Yahushua. You have to beg. You have to ask. He's the power. That's the power that comes into us to help us overcome. So I hope you can see, brothers and sisters, that this is the only way of approach that Yahushua desires. That's all he wants from us. It's all in the blueprint. 
of the Torah and the prophets. I mean, the Torah explains the approach. That's why the tabernacle was set up the way it was, you know, from the blood sprinkling and the sacrifice, which was a sign of repentance. You've done something wrong. You bring your animal, you bring your turtle doves, you bring your sheep or your goat, you get slaughtered. The bits get cut up, you know, and then the priests had another task and they were to go further and further. Those who got closer and closer to Alehim uh, had to give up more and more and become more and more set apart in order to handle the set apartness, holiness, radiation of his perfection. They had to come closer and closer. And of course, the high priest that went into the ark, well, he didn't want to have any sin in him on the day of atonement. Otherwise, he wouldn't have returned. They'd be pulling him out by the string because he could only go into that set apart place, the oracle, one one day a year. So that's the blueprint of how we're to approach Yahusha, not demanding. I mean, he wants an honest dialogue, an honest relationship with us, but he won't let us get away with anything. He'll let us rant and rave in his face, but he, he won't mean anything. He'll just go, are you finished? You finished? Stop making excuses face what you've done and until you face until you repent until you fall on your face and be humble and repent and say sorry and yeah you're right i did that i did this i did that i did that i'm still doing this i should stop that yep 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 please help me have you ever asked him to help you stop things to help you attain things have you ever asked him for his spirit have you ever cried out and asked him for his baptism of fire have you ever consciously had that in your mind all the time Oh, or are you too above that? Or do you, maybe you don't even believe in the baptism of spirit and fire. Well, how convenient for you. How easy for you. But it's still misery out there. I want to be in the baptism of spirit and fire. I want to have that experience. I want to have the full completion, the, the consummation of the star. I want to have that snap inside me. You know, so nothing phases me, nothing bothers me. I just check my thoughts and go, no, 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 no. I know all the head knowledge, but I don't, I don't apply all of it. I don't behave, certainly don't behave it. So that's enough for today, guys. I hope this can encourage you to don't be, you know, kicking around like I have for years, just sucking up to men and wanting dregs from the table, wanting the scraps from the table. You can go directly to Yahusha. He will speak to you. You can hear his voice. So run to Yahusha. Beg him. Ask him. Hunt for him. Seek. Search. And you'll find him. Love you guys. See you later.